Hello, and welcome to today's Open Dental webinar. Today, we're going to cover how to manage the ASAP list. For instance, how the ASAP list is used and where to find it, how you can filter the list to see what you need, what the difference is between ASAP appointments and ASAP recall is, and how you can use this list to view and contact your patients, as well as some of the list settings that you can change in there. So let's go ahead and get started. What is the ASAP list? This is also known as the short call list. It's simply a list of patients or a list of appointments that patients have indicated that they would like to be seen sooner for if possible. So let's go over how to mark an appointment as ASAP. It's very simple. When you're creating the appointment, all you have to do is just check this ASAP box and that will add them to the ASAP list. You can also set a patient's recall to be ASAP by going into the family module, double clicking on their recall section and their specific recall, and then marking that as schedule ASAP. These will be different than your normal ASAP appointments since they're, since they're not even scheduled yet. And you can find them in the ASAP list under the recalls section, which we will go over in a moment. So where do you find the ASAP list? Well, you'll have to be in the appointments module here, and then you can just simply click on this lists button and then you'll see ASAP right here. So you can click on this and open the full list. There are several filters you can use here to narrow down your results. So you can search by provider. You can search by clinics if your office is using clinics. If you're using public health, you can search by site. And you can also look it up by code range if you're looking for specific codes to fill your appointment slots with. Once you have selected your filters, you can go ahead and hit this refresh button to refresh the list with your new filters. There are also a couple of tabs that you will see in this list. The first being just your normal appointments tab. So these are scheduled appointments that they are hoping to get seen sooner for. It will show scheduled, unscheduled, planned and broken appointments that have been marked ASAP in this list. And in this tab, you have a couple of more filters that you can further narrow down your results by. First being the appointment status. By default, it'll show all appointments, but if you wanted to only look at scheduled appointments, planned, unscheduled or broken appointments, you can do that as well. You can also filter for hygiene or non-hygiene appointments. So if you simply wanna see all your appointments, you can see that. If you only wanna see non-hygiene appointments, you can filter that and specifically hygiene appointments you have the option for as well. The second tab here is the unscheduled recalls tab. Here you can view patients who have had their recall marked as ASAP, regardless of if they have received reminders or not. So here, if you are using WebSchedule, you'll see a little bit of extra information. You will see their due date, the patient, their age, the, the recall type, interval, how many reminders they've had, when their last reminder was, and then some more contact information and whatever status we have put for that recall. By default, this list will pull in your recall list settings here. So this can be changed if you wanna see a different date range. You can also group families together if you don't want to see, if you only want to see the guarantor, for example, or you can look for a specific number of reminders that a patient has had. So if you only want to see patients who haven't had any reminders or have had a specific number of reminders, you can just filter by that as well. This list is also very user friendly, so you can leave it up in the background while you work on something else and then easily come back to it later. We've got a variety of right-click options as well. If you right-click on a patient in the list, you can select them to switch them to who you have selected at the top. Could be useful for maybe sending a task regarding the patient or any other options that you might need the patient selected for. You can also go right to their chart. You can send their appointment to the pin board or you can remove it from the ASAP list here as well. In the recall tab, this, all of these options are about the same, except you will have the option to make the appointment since it has not already been created. So let's go over some of the list settings that we've got. If you go up here at the top left corner, you can click on the settings button and view a couple of different things that you can change in here. For the most part, this is where you'll find your templates for reaching out to your patients through the list. So 
if you're sending them a manual text or if you're using web scheduling, these templates are found here. You can also set the maximum number of texts to send to a patient in a day via web sketch. And you can also set this up so it'll prompt users to send web sketch messages to patients on the ASAP list when an appointment is broken. So now let's go ahead and go over how to use the list to contact your patients. If the office is using integrated texting, you can use this to send a manual text to your patient. You can highlight one or multiple patients on your ASAP list and hit the text button and then decide how that text will show up for them. It'll by default, it will pull up the template that you have set up in the settings for you, but you can change this as you send it out. We also have more options if you are utilizing the WebSketch ASAP service. We've got some more communication options that will let them sign up and schedule that appointment online. So if you find an opening on one of your operatories, you can right click that operatory and click the text ASAP list button. And then that will pull in that operatory and how much time that you want to mark as available. And it will only show you appointments that match that time length here. So then you can go ahead and hit the send button and it will send a message to those patients depending on how you want to send it, either text and email, text or email, or just whatever their preferred contact method is. Again, you can edit the template that sends out for the text message and for the email here, and then you would just go ahead and hit send. You can also view the history of all sent messages here. If you just hit the history button and if you wanted, you can change the date range for this to see as many messages as you want here. And then you'll see every sent message, when it was sent, what the status of it was. So if the message didn't go out or if the patient actually made an appointment, you can see that and all of the timestamps for that as well. And then this other button here under Web Sketch ASAP is the notification setting. So this is where you'll decide if you wanna send out a message after the appointment has been scheduled, just letting them know they've scheduled an appointment on this date and time. And then the very, very last option for you in the ASAP list is to simply print the list out. Just print the list just like you see it. Thank you for joining us for today's webinar. If you have additional questions, please call our support line at 503-363-5432 or access our complete online manual at opendental.com. And to make sure you're staying up to date on our latest training videos, make sure you subscribe to our channel and turn on notifications.